Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to make a video for you guys today to talk about the tricks that Scientology used to get me to join staff at the Pasadena Org in 2010. Now, I wasn't in the C organization, which is the billionaire contract that you sign. When you join staff, it's usually at a class 5 org, and the time that you're on staff is between two and a half or five years. There's two different contract options. So back in 2010, I wasn't in the Church of Scientology for very long, probably about a year or two at this point, so I didn't have a lot of experience in the Church of Scientology or anything that we all are privy to knowing. I was just totally fresh-faced and thinking that what I was doing in the Church of Scientology was helping others, helping myself, and was the greatest thing for humanity. So I knew about the Ideal Org program and how they were building different orgs in cities all over the country and all over the world, which obviously equaled money because I was regged to give donations for a lot of these buildings that were coming up because these are the organizations that are in your own community. They're going to be delivering Scientology and therefore going to be growing Scientology across our nation, all nations. You guys get the picture. I wanted to share some of the stories and some of the tricks that Scientology would use and the manipulation tactics to get me to join staff. I was in many different recruitment cycles for the Pasadena Org. Months and months before the opening, they would have their different uh, recruiters, and their recruiters would be at Celebrity Center, where I was a parishioner at. Um, it's so weird saying parishioner, because we all know that there's nothing really religious going on inside the Church of Scientology, let's be honest. So there was this one guy named Rod who would always be working to try to recruit me, and he was very persistent. He had my phone number, he knew where I lived, he was very um, persistent in his efforts to get me to join staff. Now, one of the recruitment cycles that I was in that is basically when I joined, I was going to Celebrity Center to go on course one day, and I was asked if I wanted to do a free tour of the Pasadena Org before it opened. And you're going to see all the renovations. It's almost like your own private tour before the grand opening where David Miscavige is and where they're doing the ribbon cutting and all that stuff. But we want you to see it first. And we want to do a little survey on you as well to see what you think of the org. I'm saying, wow, that, that sounds really cool. Like, yeah, like I'm willing to go. And they're like, can you go right now? And I'm like, well, I have to be on course. I can't just miss my course. So I was trying to get through these basic books, but I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever, like, um, I'll go drive down there now. They're like, we have a map, and um, this is the address, this is where it is, and go right now, there's someone that's going to be waiting for you. I'm going to call them up right now and let them know you're coming. Mm hmm kind of strange, like, I can't go after a course, like, I have to go right now. So I get in my car, and I drive from Celebrity Center to Pasadena, which isn't really that far of a drive, but from where I was living prior to where I live now, it was a bit of a commute for me to go to Pasadena. So I arrive at Pasadena and I went to the old org first, which was basically, I'll put a picture in here if I do have a picture of the org. And this org was like a storefront. It was very run down and like old carpeting. This was nothing like their current ideal orgs or anything that they have now that they're using parishioners money to fund, like all these big buildings. It was just like a storefront little like office sort of building. And so I met with Rod at the Pasadena org and he started asking me like all these preliminary questions about um, being on staff. Would I see myself on staff? Um, would I sign a two and a half year contract or a five year contract? What type of post I see myself holding as a staff member? And he started going through all this. I said, you know what? Like I respect the staff members. Like I'm just trying to be polite. Like I respect staff members and what they do for us as Scientologists and the services they deliver. But you know, right now I'm just really busy and I don't see like how I can fit being on staff in my normal everyday schedule. Like I have to work, I have to, you know, go on these acting auditions at the time and do other things. So to me, being on staff was something that wasn't really like a big priority, obviously, to me. So it's like, okay, yeah, like, cool. Like we have this guy, which I can't remember his name for the life of me. He was kind of like a young, handsome, maybe 24, maybe he was, something like that. Your old staff member, and he wants to drive you over to the Pasadena org in his car. And he's going to take you and um, show you the org. Now, obviously, I'm an adult at this point, but you always hear, you know, your parents say, like, don't get into cars with strangers. And it's not that it was that necessarily, like getting in a car with another church member. Like, you wouldn't think anything of it. And it wasn't that. The idea was, you know, that I realized later on is that if I want to leave, I don't... These were pre-Uber days. These are pre-Lyft days. You just don't 
call up an Uber on your car and, you know, you'd have to call a taxi or whatever, you know, you, you would have to find another way to get home. You know, if I was stranded there, if he didn't want to drive me back because I didn't want to join staff, like there's all these different things going on, right? He drives me over to the org. We do a tour. We walk through all the different departments. He's like this. He's beaming. And this is, you know, our new, you know, whatever training academy. And this is where we're going to make hundreds of auditors. And da, 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 da. and it's just very like overly like, wow, isn't this amazing? Isn't this awesome? Isn't this great? Isn't this so cool? And just like, yeah, like, it looks nice. It's a great organization. So as we're doing the tour, um, even on the ride there, he was doing a lot of you know, preliminary questions asking me about like my living situation, my work situation. Now I know why he was asking those questions because he's trying to figure out, do I have the right qualifications to be a staff member? Do I have it logistically right where I can maybe devote so many hours of my day to being on staff before, you know, they go into um, their sales pitch on getting me to join staff. So this guy starts introducing me to the other staff members that are working at the organization and a lot of them were young and that was the appeal to me at the time if I was to join staff was because everyone at the Pasadena org was very young like they were around my age at the time I was maybe 19 20 or something like that and everyone was around my age like in the their early adulthood young adult life they were all very young so it appealed to me I'm like oh this is so cool because I was used to being around a lot of older like first generation Scientologists and there's nothing wrong with old people but to me I like to see like there's other people I could relate to that weren't just these like old timers in the church like these were like a younger generation and for me in my brainwashed state everyone in the world is drugged and hypnotized by these messages that the psychs are implanting into us from television advertisements on these psych drugs and other things in the pharmaceutical companies and the media and you know they have all these ideas that they implant into your head that society is bad everyone are just these wogs living on this very low operating level in society but we're like these big beings but here are these other big beings that are young around my own age that I want to be friends with and that are cool because I'm already taught that the rest of the world is, you know, out to get us as Scientologists and these people aren't, you know, the most savory people to be around. But here are other Scientologists who are like motivated, I thought, and were like these people that were very inspiring, like, you know, they had great businesses or other things going on and they were so young it's like oh i aspire to be like that and they're scientologists and they're on staff and that was kind of like the appeal of if anything like i didn't necessarily want to be you know devoting five hours a day every single day for free for two and a half or five years to scientology so the guy brought me down to like this table we're in this huge building all alone just the two of us and he puts a contract in front of me and he's like okay you just have to sign here 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 and we'll get you you know situated and you'll be going on these courses and I'm just kind of like okay like ready to go here you go like here's the pen to sign the contract and i'm like no like I, I just want some time to think about it if anything i don't really feel like this is you know something i'm looking to join right into and he's like you know it, it's great just to put the postulate there and make the decision so what you have to do is just decide like if you think this is something good for you and this is something good for society we just need you to sign the contract so of course I went into like, you know, I'm not going to be able to support myself if I'm going to be on staff because the jobs that I'm working run into the night a lot of the times. Like I can't devote myself to be on staff on a full-time schedule. Like maybe like one or two days a week, but they're like, no, 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 you have to either be full-time staff or not at all. Like you can't just show up and volunteer and help out once a week. You have to devote, you know, those seven days a week straight to the Church of Scientology. So I was obviously not about that. I told him no. And he's like, um, oh, what we can do is a project to prepare, which is big for the Sea Org and other things where they have this list that you make of different things that um, you need handled before you can go to staff. Like, say, selling your car, getting your apartment rented out for you, whatever, in order for you to arrive and be a comfortable staff member and basically giving up everything that you have so you can be on staff. So he's like, you know, you sign the contract and then if we don't meet the qualifications of this list, if we don't help you with these different checkpoints, then your contract's not valid for staff. And I said, well, you know what, if you can do that project prepare list for me first, is what I said, then I'll sign the contract. But they're like, no, we need a commitment from you first that you're going to be the staff member. And I'm like, well, I can't commit to that because I can't give up five hours of my day unless I know that I'm going to be 
you know, everything's going to be square and straight for me. After maybe an hour and a half of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, he brought me back to the Pasadena org. This is where the story gets interesting, I guess. So we um, got back to the Pasadena org and Rod was there. There was this other guy and other girl like they brought me into this like really small room hey, the door is here there's someone sitting in front of the door like their chair is like on the door and then there's someone sitting next to the door and i'm basically where i am now in like the back corner like of the room and the girl in the room starts telling me about you know how much she's gained by being a staff member and how she became an auditor and they want me to become an auditor because i'm this very capable person you know, this sort of love bombing kind of kicks in. I'm this very capable person that is going to be able to help so many people and look at, you know, all these different courses I've already done in Scientology and look how young I am and how much, you know, future and everything I could have by being a staff member, how competent I'm going to be able to be. You know, they're just kind of laying it on thick. And I'm just like, no, like, I, I don't know if this is what I want to be doing. So then the guy starts talking and she's like, doo, 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 just like these talking heads just talking to me in psychiatry and da, 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 and just hitting all their points on how Scientology is salvaging mankind and the destruction of our society through psychiatry and through, you know, all these other evil SPs that are out there that are trying to bring down the church. And those people who are staff members are on the front lines to help others you know, in Scientology, outside Scientology, making our community a better place, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're going through their whole pitch and I'm not about it. I don't want to join. They start saying, oh, well, we're going to get dinner for you because we've been talking for a while. And because I was saying like I was hungry, whatever. And they're like, we're, we're, we're going to get your dinner and stay right here. Like, don't worry. Like, you don't have to go to a restaurant. Just stay right here. Like, we're going to, we're going to cook for you. So it's just another way for them to buy more time with me because at this point it was probably six o'clock maybe and meanwhile I probably got there at like 1 30 or something so I've already been listening to these people talking my ear off for so long so I finally got my meal and it was this bean burrito just like your basic bean and rice burrito I guess that they just whipped up in the back they got a can of beans from you know their kitchen and microwaved it whatever and rolled it up in a tortilla sort of thing like that's all it was I mean, hmm, interesting now, knowing that, you know, sea orgers go on rice and bean diets. And here I am, you know, they're trying to tell me how wonderful staff life is and what are they feeding me, a bean burrito. So I'm eating this bean burrito and it's, it's, I laugh about it now because it's just so ridiculous how, how they work. But anyway, so I'm sitting there and they're getting much more aggressive with me trying to join staff. I keep telling them I'm not interested. I'm not joining staff. This isn't what I want to do. I'm being very firm, like trying to be like, okay, like, great, like have to be on course tomorrow, bye. No, like we need you to join staff, Steve. Like this is, you have been chosen to join staff. This isn't just, there's so many people that want to join staff that can't join staff. And you are one of the selected people that we want to be on our team that we chose because we think that you have something special to bring to the table. And we know you're going to be an excellent auditor. You are going to be this OT because you're going to be going up the bridge when you're on staff. And they used like the money tool thing. They said, you know, how do you plan on going up the bridge? Because it is very expensive. How do you plan on doing that? I'm like, well, I've been, you know, putting it on credit cards and, you know, money I've been making at work. And he's like, you know, you've been in Scientology now for a year and a half, two years, however long it's been at this point. You've been in for that long and you've only gotten to here on the bridge when there's grade two, three, four, clear, and you're only on this bottom lower part of the bridge. You know, at this rate that you're going, you know, you have to go clear, you have to become free. And, you know, if you're not able to do that by your own financial means, then, you know, by being a staff member, you're gonna have it made for you because we're gonna give you all the courses for free. We're gonna give you the auditing and everything that you need so you can, go up the bridge, you're going to be more capable, you're going to be around these other people. I'm just trying to show you guys like the sort of language that they're using to try to fluffy you up a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, no, you know, like, I don't know, you know, I, I was kind of like on the fence, like, I don't know if I want to really join the staff or not. So eventually the girl leaves and I'm just one on one with this guy and he's getting a little bit more you know, frustrated because I'm not just signing the staff contract like everyone else just does like right away. What they did was they have the contract and they're saying, just 
write your name on the contract. We want you to confront the contract. We don't think that you can confront it and it's just a piece of paper and it's not as scary as you think. Really? It's not as scary as you think when you're signing five hours of your life away for two and a half or five years to a church that you've only been a part of for a short period of time at this point. And not that it's scary, like if it was a real religious volunteer thing and you're signing saying I want to become a volunteer, like that's one thing, but Scientology, you know, already is waving like red flags. I didn't really piece it all together till like later on in the picture, but just write your name on it and you know, you'd sign your address, your telephone number, whatever. We just want to see if you can just confront the contract, fill it out, and we won't even put it into effect. If you want, you could rip it up. But you're not going to rip it up, is what they said. You're not going to rip it up because you're going to feel so much freedom. So much freedom by signing the contract. You're going to feel so good. You're going to feel so theta. You're going to feel like there's so much good in the decision that you make by becoming a staff member and you're going to be able to help so many people whether it's hurricane katrina whether it's whatever we are on the front lines of helping you and helping others out there like oh like you know by being a scientology staff member you can change conditions on this planet Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, like in that case, <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. So then he's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Get the pen and put it on the paper and withdraw. Put the pen on the paper and withdraw. Pen on the paper and withdraw. And I'm, and I'm like, it's so silly. He's like, do you have a pen? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I have one right here. And then he's like, okay, here's the pen. Ready? Reach. With, you know, put it on the paper, whatever, and put an S. Okay, just an S. Just put an S on the page. And you're thinking, like, this is the amount of trickery that they're engaging in just to get me to sign. Like, put either, just put your put the first one letter on, then the next letter, then the next letter. Like, and, and if you did this to sign a mortgage or a loan or something, anyone would say it's coercion. It's just not, it's not on my own free will of wanting to do this. You know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to play this game. I told him, like, this is the game. I'm not, I don't want to play it. Like, I don't want any, like, part in this. Just put the S, like, come on, like you want to do it, come on, just put the S, just put the S, 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 and they're cheering, and there's other people like, come on, put the S on the paper, and I, like, I was laughing because it was just so ridiculous, even though I'm like, I'm not going to be a staff member, but I'll, I'll put the S on, so I put the S on, they're screaming, ah, you put the S on the paper, not put the T, in the E, in the V, in the E, like, and they were going through this whole, like, routine, and it, it, it was so, like, so strange and I was like I was kind of like playing along and I was kind of scared of, then I was just like, like no like and then I, I ripped it up in front of him I'm like you said I could rip it up like I, I ripped it up like I don't want to you know join staff like like I came to my senses for a second they put another contract in there like you know and so I ripped up the contract right in front of him and I said well I can rip up the contract if I want that's what you guys said if I don't you know want to put it into effect I could rip it up so um they're like well do you want another bean and cheese burrito? Like, what is it going to take? I'm like, do I really need a bean and cheese burrito right now? Like, do I really enjoy it that much that that's going to somehow make me, make me commit two and a half years of my life to Scientology as a bean and cheese burrito? Okay, so this is another, like, one of those sort of, like, love bombing sort of pressure that they sort of put on me. What they did was, um, I saw because they had a little window in the room. So I'm kind of looking through the window and they're bringing in all these congratulations balloons. They're bringing in um, a cake, or this big cake, and they start turning up the music. And they told me, we're having a party because you're joining staff tonight. We already know that you made a decision to join staff. You just have to sign the paperwork to join staff. We have this party. All the staff members are here. We are so excited that you're joining the team. And it's like, five seconds ago, I just told you I wasn't joining. And now all of a sudden, you know, they're parading in all these balloons, everything, and they're all standing, like, around the door. So, they have balloons, they have cake, and they're turning up the music, and they're screaming, like, Steve Mango's joining staff! Steve Mango's joining, yay! Like, whatever, and they're, like, cheering and chanting, and they have balloons and cake and everything, and I'm not gonna lie, that, not that, it's like, you don't want to let them down, you know? Like, you're still a part of this group, even though I didn't want to be a staff member, but, you know, I don't want to let these people down. I was feeling really pressured and uncomfortable and I had all these other like staff member friends there and so when the two staff members were getting kind of upset what they did was they decided to word clear the entire contract with me. So in word clearing you'll go through each word because I must have a misunderstood word. There's something I'm probably not really understanding properly. 
in their mind because that's why I don't want to join because maybe I'm a little foggy in the head because that's a phenomenon of a misunderstood word. So they went through the definition of everything. What does church mean? What does of mean? What does Scientology mean? What is Pasadena? Like it, it, they go through every single word. What is the word is? What is the word to mean? What does the word this mean? So, you know, make a sentence with the word, you know, demo out, you know, this part of the contract like so they went through like this excruciating thing with the dictionary a derivation diction the regular dictionary the de derivation dictionary you have to clear up each and every definition you know you have to if you don't understand it, there's a whole process of how to clear a misunderstood word so i had to go through and clear up all these stupid words and i still didn't want to sign the contract and that really got them upset because they thought like wow like now you understand you know the contract so why wouldn't you want to sign it now there's nothing hidden in there because they probably thought like i was afraid like i was signing away my all my life assets or something i knew what it what they were saying in the contract but i still didn't want to um sign the contract i eventually signed the contract i it was at this point oh my god what time was it I left, I remember, I left at 11.48, but that was like at the end of this little party thing. So I probably signed the contract at 11. So this has been 1.40, 11, 10 hours, 10 and a half hours, something like that, of just constant wearing me down, on and on, just go... And anything I said, there was an answer, and there's a reference, and talking to me about how society... and uh, There was just so much mind-twisting, so I signed the contract, they were shocked. Like, the guys in the, oh my god, like, he actually did sign it. Like, they're so excited. Like, okay, you fill out your name here, and you sign this, and you sign this, and you go all along here, and so I signed that contract. So then, after I signed the contract, I opened the door, and everyone is like, <laughs> like that. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. Like, they were off their rocker screaming. Like, so like, <laughs> <laughs> that was like the only way I could describe it, but it was in like a manic, like bipolar manic sort of way. They're screaming, the music is so loud, like it is throbbing in there like a West Hollywood gay club. It was boom, 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 boom. The music is going. Um, they're dancing, they're feeding me cake, they're slapping me on the back. Um, so then they all stood around me and they're like, dance, 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 dance. And I'm like, uh, like I was kind of like embarrassed, like I, I was like, like yay, like I joined staff. But then they're like, no, we want you to like, like actually do like a whole like, <laughs> a whole like dance routine. And I'm like, no, like, no, like not really interested. But they're like, come on, dance, dance. So like I'm doing this little jig thing. And I don't even know how to dance. And I was just doing a dance, and uh, I look like a idiot. So I was dancing and whatever. So eventually I got to go home. Um, and I decided, even though I signed the contract, I'm like, I can probably null and void this thing before I start. So I didn't um, show up to any of, like, the staff training. Like, what I did was I filled out, like, the um, life history form. Oh, 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 okay. So this is where my story, um, I think I signed the Pasadena staff contract twice. For some reason, because what happened was there was an event at the Hollywood and Highland Center um, where like the Kodak Theater is and all of that. There was like a maiden voyage event. I believe it was a maiden voyage. And there were these big booths, sign up for Pasadena Org. Like if anyone, no one was there. Like no one's just going to walk up to the tent and be like, oh, okay, let me sign up. Like there was no line. No one was signing up. And um, there was this staff member guy, two of them. And oh, I remember his name. I remember his name. I'll show you guys after, <laughs> um, of one of the guys, um, and one of them was super cute, one of them was like, okay, like, he was fine, but one of them was super cute, and, um, there are these two cute young guys that are trying to recruit me for Pasadena Org, obviously I'm gay, I know in the comment section it's gonna be all, you're a faggot, and blah, 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 like, yeah, I know, I'm gay, get over it, and no to the person who keeps asking me about my sexual gay position, I'm not answering you, I'm trying to block you, I don't know how to block you on my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, you know who you are. So, um, the two guys started, um, talking to me about passing to org again. This is where the two stores, like, I remember I signed that contract and then I didn't show up for some of the courses, but then I signed the contract a second time. Now, these guys were, um, also staff members and they were talking to me, these two guys were talking to me probably for months about joining staff at Pasadena. I was hanging out with them at the event. 
like they're like I said in the beginning of the video, like they're these guys that I really admired in some way because they were like a good example of like what a young Scientologist should be or something. And I wanted to be like them, I guess, and they seemed like they had their shit together. So I was like bonding with these two in some way, like not in like a gay sexual way, but we were just like friends and you know, one of them was, so one of the guys was talking to me about how um, after staff, like he has like this ranch, I guess, and they go like horseback riding and he would love to take me horseback riding and just like me and him till I get to know each other. And then we're gonna be on staff together. And uh, since we're all on this team together and it's all about being on this team, like we're all a group and we're all like these friends and family members and we all hang out. And it was just like this little like group, like little click and like, you know, you're gonna be a part of it. And now remember I left my home. I have no friends no family members, all I know is Scientology. I am very left out, I'm trying to find sta you know, stability in my life. And here are these people who I actually like that are like, hey, like you're gonna be a part of this group. And that was really what motivated me. So I signed another staff contract at the event. So in the event, they scream out, everyone! And I'm like, oh. Because it was the two of them. Because they told me like they were going to announce me. But I didn't think they were going to announce me like to the whole event. So they're like, everyone! And they whistle like, whoo -hoo! Like, I don't know. <laughs> I like making a fool of myself trying to whistle. But like they do the like sort of thing to whistle. And um, the whole room is silent. And I'm like, well, this is, this is the moment. So they're like, everyone... We'd like to announce Steve Mango, like stand-up sort of thing. Stephen Mango has joined staff at the Pasadena Org. You know, they're all cheering, yay, yay, and everyone, like the whole, like all of the people that were there, like thousands of people, like clapping in 2010 at one of the events. And I'm just kind of like, like, yep, join staff. And they were like, very well done. And people are cheering and like, yeah, like you get that staff, <laughs> you know, staff career. No one else joined that day, only me, I guess. So then they sit me down at this table with this woman and I'm filling out one of the life history forms. And the life history form is very gruesome going into like, name every single sexual experience you ever had, list all the details, all the positions, all the times, everything that you've done sexually. I'm like, oh, like, okay. Like, have you ever had a homosexual experience? Have you ever, like, it goes in, like, if I have, um, the contract, if I find it online, I will, the, if I find the life history form, I will link it down below and you guys can read the different questions that they ask you. I filled out that, whatever, but I didn't actually, um, I didn't actually go back to the org, because then there was a couple weeks until the opening, so I didn't actually go to, um, the org to do any, like, the staff status, zero, one, two, like, I didn't do any of that. I just disappeared, like, I'm like, okay, like, um, I signed this stupid contract. Hopefully now they'll leave me alone, which wasn't the case. I signed two and a half years of my life. So I, um, I go to, um, I go to the opening of the Pasadena Org, where David Miscavige and everyone was. So I had a little moment where, um, I was like, you know what, maybe I should just go, at least though, just help us with even just the opening, you know, like the, they're just trying to get me to show up, right? So after a while of not showing up, I show up. I'm not trained for a specific post. I don't have, did I have the uniform at this point? I think they said, we're gonna give you the uniform the day of, like just show up in like your dress shirt, whatever. And we're gonna get you the uniform. I actually do have a picture of me in the uniform from the opening of the event. Um, if I have it, I will post it right here. So they do like their roll call you know, checking if everyone was here, I was there, whatever. So anyone who was a new staff member had to go to one section, the other ones were going to drill training routines, and I ended up working the, I ended up working the cafe with the main girl who was in charge of the cafe. So I was working with her to um, set up like the hors d'oeuvres and to set up like the waters and the different things. Like I was gonna basically be running like the cafe. They're like, well, if you're interested, like you can work with her on, you know, if you want to work the cafe, work the cafe. Like, that can be like your post. Like you can work at the cafe with this girl. I'm like, okay, that sounds kind of cool. Like that's probably easy enough because I'm not trained as an auditor or anything at this point. So I needed something that was simple enough that I could pick up, right? So um, at least for that day, like I was handing out waters, whatever. But um, 
we went outside, like everyone is so excited. David Miscavige was there and all these different executives. So David Miscavige is standing here. We're standing like here on like the side of the stage. So David Miscavige is like right there, right in front of us. And he's acknowledging us staff members, like, oh, these are all the staff members that are helping, you know, clear this plan in, you know, whatever he's saying. You know, he did a little introduction to us and like, when you're in that position, you're like, wow, this is like the Pope of the church, like acknowledging me for being like a staff member, like, oh, you know, how good does that feel? Like, could you imagine if the Catholic Pope recognized your work or something? And that's kind of how I felt like, wow, here's this, you know, person that's leading Scientology saying like, we're doing, you know, such a big mission and I'm a part of that. And so right away on day one, since I didn't have the post and I was helping out in the cafe, but I didn't really have a post. So the uh, ED of the, or the, you know, the executive director, um, she, um, the executive director of the org was giving out like chores and she told me clean the toilet just like that like, clean the toilet like she didn't even know me like you're cleaning the toilet like you don't have a post you're cleaning the toilet I'm, like, cleaning the toilet and I, I can't believe I spoke up now because usually I'm just kind of like yes sir and you know you just do it you just like, even if it's a woman that's in Scientology even if it's a woman you just say yes sir even if it's a woman you have to acknowledge her as sir if she's senior to you so it's like yes sir you know that's a, how you would supposed to do it clean the bathroom no one's ever used the bathroom. It's a brand new org. It's clean. Like, why would I have to clean it? She's like, you have to clean the bathroom. You, know, you, can, you are ordered to clean the bathroom. Okay. So I go in there and the bathroom is, again, spotless because no one has used it. You know, it looks brand new. I just pretended like I was cleaning like the sink or something. I'm like, screw this. Like, I didn't join staff to clean the toilets. I, and I just had like a realization like right in that moment like what I'm gonna be doing here isn't gonna be helping anyone I'm just housekeeping maintenance end of even at the end of the event it was nothing like nothing to clean but I was continuously just made to clean and I'm like you know what screw this I'm not gonna be on staff anymore so I texted um, the people who recruited me said, you know what, thanks so much for the opportunity. I was happy to help for the org opening, but unfortunately this isn't something I see myself doing. And um, it was weeks and weeks of daily texts and visits and trying to get me to come back. I told them, no, like I made my decision, but you have to do ethics and you have to do this and you have to route out. And I said, I haven't even done my staff status courses. I'm not even, I don't even have a post. So it shouldn't matter if... Um, if I have to route out, like I, I was barely, I was only there to help for one day and I signed the contract and I didn't even, you know, I helped out with the opening sort of thing. So I was trying to convince them. They said, well, the uniform is $2,000. You have to return the uniform or we're charging you $2,000. My $2,000, it was, their uniform is like a steakhouse, you know, you have like the little vest on and everything. And it was just like what they get at like the uniform store. It probably didn't cost more than like $30 for everything, the suit code and everything. I don't believe they paid $2,000. That We're not talking Hugo Boss, Versace, Armani. We're talking like uniform store. So I said, you know what I'll do? I'll UPS ship you with signature so they don't say that they didn't get it. Signature, signed receipt sort of thing. So um, they got their uniform back. So I, cause I didn't even want to set foot in the org, at Pasadena org. I didn't want to be anything around those people. I didn't want to be convinced to come back. I didn't want those people that I was friends with to, you know, get under my skin and start trying to get me to come back on the staff. Um, but I knew after they tried to tell me to clean the toilets, I was not cleaning any toilets. So, um, yeah, that was my short, very short stint on staff was the opening of Pasadena Org. Um, but basically just, you know, I kind of told you about my whole Pasadena experience of being a staff member there, but basically the point was is how they try to use you to get onto staff and then you join staff and it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Luckily I got off staff after a very short period of time. I knew things could have been much more worse. Now there was Sea Org recruitment cycles that are a hundred times worse that were physically, emotionally, spiritually, everything horrible. Like I talk about some of them in my video. I'll go into more details if you guys are interested in hearing some more of like the actual Sea Org recruitment cycles, which are a lot more um, intense, way more intense. 
So I'll kind of make another video for you guys if you like this video. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Please click subscribe below, and I will continue to make videos for you guys, and you will get updates on more of my videos. Please give a thumbs up on this video, and go down the comment section and let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching.